Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome to Better Together. When you know better, you get better. It is the end of the week, guys. It's Thursday, January 7th, 2021. Our quote of the day, be at war with your vices, at peace with your neighbors, and let every new year find you a better man. That is from Benjamin Franklin. Or woman. Or woman. I like that. Today, guys, we're going to be chatting with well-known actress and singer Kyla Pratt. She's best known for her roles as Brianna Latrice Barnes on One on One uh, and as the voice of Penny Proud in the TV series The Proud Family, which was also the first Disney Channel animated series. And it's coming back, FYI. Um, We are going to have some fun chatting with her today because... She and I did an episode of One on One, um, and we were talking about it in the live Instagram. I had this big like fro wig and yellow outfit, and I was supposed to be her fairy godmother, and um, it was really fun, and I had a really made up weird accent, and (laughs) do you remember, Kev? Oh my God, of course I remember. I remember everything, the outfit, I remember the wig, the earrings, everything. (laughs) <laughs> do we have the holla clip? at your girl yes i do i'll pull clip? it up for them that was the line that was your outline what holla is it? at your girl is that what oh I my said? God, that's my favorite line ever i don't remember that all right let me watch okay, this here we i haven't go. seen this in 80 years that's me for all of your gotham city needs Glinda, stylist and fairy godmother to the stars. You even need a wish granted. You know who to call. Who? I see which one you are. Scrolls the new Bond Dutch. No one wears hugs in the summer. This isn't LA. And here's the flashlight. So you don't have to dress in the dark anymore. <laughs> hey, where'd she go? Incredible. Guys, <laughs> honey, what was that accent? I really don't know. <laughs> Wait, there's more, right? Do you have the other part queued up? No. I think that's that, all we needed. That, that, I want to go down memory fine. lane. I want to see the other parts. It's when I sit her down and we have our moment. Jeff, Jeff's, we don't have audio on you. Yeah, Jeff's talking with oh. his audio now. There working. he is. There, uh, hello? Hello? Hello, <laughs> Jeff? Hello? hello, can you hear me oh. now? Hello, Jeff? We're going to move on, guys, um, because there are some... You know, we're talking TV with Kyla today, and I have to share some of my new favorite shows. Obviously, you guys know 90 Day Fiance is a staple in this family, and we have been enjoying it uh, tremendously this season. I missed a lot from July to December because we were in Connecticut, and we didn't watch 90 Day Fiance, really. Um, So I'm back in it because it's our couple's viewing, and it's been fun. But we did also binge over the holiday break on Cobra Kai, mm. season three, honey. Number one on Netflix and <laughs> therefore number one in the country as they're claiming. Is it but season right three? It is season three. Yeah, it was really good. Do you guys watch Cobra Kai? I don't, so but I don't I'm about to get in a TV. lot of trouble, like Uh-oh. enough to maybe like forever change my opinion and respect of me as a producer and co-host. Maybe Kevin, don't say ready? anything, Why? Jeff. Go ahead, Jeff. I've never seen The Karate Kid. Neither, I've never seen Jeff, neither have I. Oh, by the way, t- n- just do you think that surprises me in the least? Wow, well, I love it, right? I, I love the. 80s I think too. you would like. I think you would like it. I think you would like it. I don't know if you would love it. That's what I'm saying. I, Jeff doesn't need ayahuasca. He doesn't need like. It's for like. Uh, it's for you know. I find there's an appeal from two generations. The younger people really yeah. connect with the new message and the younger crowd and the Ralph Macho. And then I find that the older people all hit me up about Johnny Lawrence, you know, the bad guy, and, well, the former bad guy, the, if you watch the series now and how he behaves and acts, but yeah. Well, Cause Jeff, television no. and, 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 you know, anything scripted has changed so much. It used to be mm-hmm. like good and evil and now it's gray yeah. because that's really more reflective well, that, of people, right? We have good and we have bad in us. Yes, but I mean, I, not, of course. Am I, but I'm I, only good. But the, but the Ralph Macchio character is more evolved and the young kids, you know, are more what you'd expect from young kids today. And then you've got <laughs> Johnny Lawrence who, you know, when we ca- saw him in season one, he's in the 1990s, like, um, stripped firebird uh he's 
a massive drunk. He, in his brain, he's kind of still stuck in the '80s. He that's yeah. all, he binge watches all old shows. He listens to, you know, um, music from that era. But his mentality is from that era. Like everybody's, you know, he's like, yeah, he's just a pussy. You know what I mean? Like he's, it's and so he's, but he's having to learn how to adapt Evolve. into today. Yeah. So and, I've people love the show. I mean, what's interesting, Kev, is like, yes, I know what you're saying about kind of the old school throwback, but like my NPR culture shows love Cobra Kai. Like people are talking about the show in a kind of prestige way that makes me think I really have to watch it. Wait, can we go back to NPR culture shows? <laughs> Just the way no. you said that. Um, <laughs> Jeff, it's fu- you have enough on your plate. You don't need, I, normally I prescribe these. No, yeah. I've had to prescribe Cobra Kai to many, many a guy that is, uh, that's living the Johnny life Mm. that's just kind of a little depressed drinking needs like a fire under their ass. Like I'm like, just watch Cobra Kai. Okay. Next recommendation, because I'm going to keep this moving along. Go. Uh, Queens Gambit. Anybody Uh, watching that? I haven't seen it. I've seen four. You've seen four. Isn't it so good? I think we're on episode four too. It's really beautifully made. I think yeah. like if you're looking for that kind of escapist mm-hmm. Netflix budget, costuming, production design, and a mm-hmm. great performance from our lead, Anya Taylor-Joy, it's definitely worth checking out. I'm really digging it so far. I think it's I'm so loving good. it. The too. only thing I've seen recently is Ted Lasso, so I'm just going to remove myself from this TV viewing, though I do love Ted Lasso. I have no idea That's what good. that is. Ted Lasso. Well, it's... Jason Sudeikis. Yeah. Oh, okay. Apple TV. Okay, Phenomenal. Good. All right. Yeah. Um, and Bachelor's back. Mm-hmm. I know See, to I no know to no fanfare. No, nobody cares. And by the way, you get the two biggest Bachelor fans in the room here. I what, know, but that's why. Listen, I've why? seen a friend. Kinda, well, why don't you guys care? I like the Bachelorette better than the Bachelor personally. I don't know how Jeff feels. And also, like Mondays are hard for us, <laughs> so I don't got yeah. time on a Monday. I'm telling truthfully. you, we'll catch up. We'll catch, we'll catch up. up. It's we're gonna change I, this show's schedule anyway. I think. Yeah. We're going to change some things yeah. and things will get better. All right, moving on, guys. <laughs> um, Listen, the Office of is... Executive Producer Elect has some new initiatives that Honey, we're, we're going to be waiting If you on. don't stop right now. Okay. Um, we are talking about saving with the Duncan snack in menu today. Yes, we it's are. time for our Duncan break, as usual. We had some fun talking the other day with Rachel Cruz about um, being fiscally responsible in the new year. And so we're going to share with you our Duncan snack in menu, which is. Dining on a budget, which also will help you with your New Year's resolutions to lose weight because this is like a micro bagel. So, <laughs> you know, um, Jeff, obviously you usually have something over there. Do you have anything that you're sharing with us today? You know, I'm going to get in trouble. I uh, got to be honest, the Dunkin' Donut snack bites, I like very stupidly between shows. Maria's got them. Those are the cream cheese filled um, cheese filled bagels. bagel bites. Yes. Did I say donut? I meant bagel. bagel they bites. are so good. I know. I love a bagel bite. They're filled with cream cheese. That's right. I Whoa. usually get them when I go pick up my order anyway. They also have, and Maria, I didn't Whoa. get you this. Whoa. Maria, someone needs to, what do I always say? Honey? Someone needs to go to jail. I know. You're going to die. <laughs> it's I, so good. It's oh criminal. my God. Wait, wait, wait. Can we just discuss? This changes my life. Mm-hmm. I'm First so of all. Happy. This is an everything stuffed mini bagel. It is so delicious. It is so soft and mushy. The cream cheese inside is perfect. I'm going to tell you this. The worst, most annoying thing in life is you get your bagel. Then you get to try to drive while cream cheesing it. And then you realize you can't do that. So you get a pullover. Now you're late. All you got to do is grab this little guy. Okay. Maybe two. They and come boom. With two, so and bam. now you're popping in your mouth and you're drinking your coffee and you're driving with your knee. What? I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that. But they also wow. have Maria, and I didn't get you this because I know you're kicking your sugar. But wow. they have wow. Oh my god. So good. <laughs> Honey, come inside right now. You're gonna die. Come into studio He's right coming. now. He's, He's gonna coming. Die. Um, okay. So they have maple bacon, snacking bacon. Mm. Which is like maple sugar snacking bacon. We're like that's, what? That's your splurge if you want to, you know, exactly. treat treat yourself on a Friday. Treat yourself. Love Philadelphia. Um, what in the world is happening in my mouth right now? It's I know, Maria. You know, we are lucky to have a partnership with Duncan, so they give us, you know, gift cards. And I would be lying if I said that every time I get my order for the show, I don't also get those everything stuff mini bagel bites. Uh, I know about so these. Good. 
Yeah. I didn't know about so these. Did you guys get this at our regular Dunkin' Donuts? Yeah, yeah I, just got, I just got it down the street. I didn't know they existed. Yeah. Honey, everywhere. are you dying? So good. Oh my gosh, it's perfect. Perfect, right? Perfect. <clears throat> like I'm starving right now. Mm. And they're a nice Chubby. size, like you said, Maria. Sometimes Chubby. a whole bagel right? is like aggressive. Yeah. This is when you're traveling on the road, fly through that Dunkin' drive through just get the mm. mini bagel bites and a coffee, and you'll be set to lunch or dinner, depending on whenever you get them. It's so chubby and creamy yeah. Yeah. and flavorful. Mm -hmm. mm. Wow. Yeah. This is going to be a game changer for me. It already is for me. <laughs> wow. And I'm not just saying that. I did already eat most of my um croissant stuffer so we've got the gluten-free fudge brownie maple sugar snack and bacon croissant stuffers and of course the plain or the everything stuffed bagel oh yeah mini bagel holy moly and while participation may vary right now you can try a medium hot or iced duncan extra charged coffee for only two dollars and Jeff, can you do the rest so I can chew and swallow? Yeah, I will let you. I'm going to put on my uh, my game show host voice. <laughs> uh, all the extra charge coffee is made with green coffee extract for mm -hmm. an added boost of 20% more caffeine. And for a limited time, you can grab a medium hot or ice for only $2 and get more from your morning. Um, the last thing that they uh, were really excited about with Dunkin' is the savings program. So you can become a member mm -hmm. uh, or... Maybe a member because I feel like Duncan is so Bostonian. That was nice. Yeah, that was nice, Jeff. I very feel good. Like you're gonna, you can be a Duncan member. I don't do a very good Boston accent. I'm trying my best. Member. Member. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, members earn rewards and get exclusive discounts <laughs> and freebies with a Duncan app and become. Uh, so, why would you become a Duncan Rewards member? Earning points on every order. I'm just going to read it normal. I'm yeah. Gonna, like, let's go. Yeah, let's go audience. normal. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but w when you become a Dunkin' Rewards member, you earn points on every order. You get the convenience of ordering and paying through the app. You get access to exclusive discounts. I love that because you it surprises you when you open your app. And finally, um, you know you can redeem other special offers through the app. So it's amazing. Mm -hmm. And uh, with these snacks, the discounts, and the app, you can get like a great breakfast for so inexpensive. And like Rachel Cruz says, every dollar counts. So. Uh, I am really, really loving all the surprises at Dunkin' Donuts. I know. <clears throat> Every day I'm getting an amazing surprise. And I think the everything bagel bites are the greatest surprise of my maybe life. It's I'm not kidding. You Guys, it's it's, it's very it's the little things in life. The mini bagel. Maria's also like a, a food, um, for lack of better term, crazy person. So mm -hmm. she's like <laughs> She is serious about her food. Her endorsements mean a lot. Trust, Trust me. Truly. Trust me. Truly. But I love things that solve problems. Yes. And this solves a major problem for me. So now I can just drive and go. If I need something, boom, it's in my mouth. I'm out the door. Okay. <clears throat> I'm slightly regretting that I shared the other one with Kevin, but I know where I can go to get more now. <laughs> That's right. In the meantime, let us get to our interview with Miss Kyla Pratt, shall we? You know, it's kind of, it's going to be with us for a while. I don't see things changing for a while. Yeah. I mean, the good thing about it is I don't have to buy any pants for any of this. I'm wearing so, jeans and it's a rare blessings. moment now. I'm trying to count my blessings. And uh, <laughs> the top is usually really super cute. And then the bottom is like <laughs> pajama pants. Exactly. Exactly. I know I did that. I had a onesie on the other day. And mm. I had to do an interview, so I, I changed just the top, and then I tied the onesie around my waist. And I'm like, if they make me stand up, I'm going to be so embarrassed. It was with, like, ESPN, so I was wearing, like, my Patriots, you know, jacket. I'm like, if they make me stand, they're going to know that I'm like... I'm always nervous somebody's going to make me stand. <laughs> yeah, isn't that funny? And I'm like, how, do, how can I funnily get out of standing up right now? <laughs> so for all of you guys who are watching right now, Kyla Pratt has been a staple on TV, movie screens. She's had iconic roles from uh, The Proud Family, One on One, which we'll get into. We had a, an episode we did together. And now Fox's Call Me Cat, where the, she stars opposite Maya Bialik. And she is a rare example of an actress who has parlayed a successful career as a child actress into an impressive career into her adulthood with grace, dignity, and class. Today, we're going to be chatting all about her secrets to balance it all. And so, Kyle, I'm so excited to have you on. And um, it was such a nice kind of blast from the past to uh, <laughs> to see that you were going to be a part of the show today. And 
I think you have a lot of valuable life experience to share because you don't often hear of someone who started so young in this industry um, not kind of have the normal pitfalls that we're accustomed to seeing. And maybe you did and we didn't see them because you also came up at a time when there really wasn't social media. You were so young. You were very, you. very young. <laughs> I'm always very, I always say that. I always, I'm like, I am so happy I didn't come up during that time where everybody was posting everything. Like that has to be, and that's why I sympathize a lot with the younger generation. And I'm like, don't, no, don't do that. Don't, no, that's forever. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. I mean, I'm, I, I, I started in this business as a kid and I fell in love with it and I really can't see myself doing anything else. Um, I love every part of it. Um, even though a lot of it has changed now and, um, there is more of you that you, you know, I'm used to the mystery thing where it's like, no, I'm an actress. You'll see me when you see me, like when I'm on, <laughs> when I'm on camera or when I'm shooting, like, what do you mean? I have to become social in on my phone. Like I'm confused. Um, uh, but <laughs> I, you know, I did, I did, I started young and, um, but I've always, you know, had a great support system. I've always had people around me, um, family, and uh, especially that, you know, never treated me different. Um, I always felt like, uh, like I, like people talk to me about one-on-one in the crowd family nowadays. And I'm like, it's amazing because at that time I was like 14, we shot one-on-one. I was like 14 to 19. I did crowd family 14 to 17. And um, I wasn't really doing the shows and thinking people were going to watch it. <laughs> it was like, oh, I get to go to work and we did an episode. So, all right, I'm going to hang out with my friends and I'll see you guys later. And then I would hear stuff like, it's the most watched show on. And I'm like, people are watching this? Oh, okay. Like it wasn't, you know, I didn't think about, Yeah. I didn't have to worry about the business part of things, which kind of, you know, messed with me a little later. Cause I was like, okay, Kyla, you're grown now. You have to think of this as a business, not as a mm. hobby, something that's fun. But I think because I didn't have that type of pressure on me as a child, it was like, I was able to enjoy it, you know? So I was it was just fun. Just it was just fun for me. I was like, oh, this is amazing. What does my character get to do this week? Or what is she experiencing? And and also realizing, you know, that it's acting because I would have stuff that comes my way. And I'm like, what? I wouldn't do that. And I was like, oh, this isn't about you, Kyla. This is about, you know, the character. And um, yeah, I went through a, a lot of different things in my teenage years, um, my early 20s, and even now to this day. And that's why I love doing stuff like this because, um, for some reason, everybody looks at us in the industry and they're like, oh, they're perfect. They don't, you know, if we haven't heard anything, you know, everything is there. Oh, look at, and I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm a human being. <laughs> I go through many things. Um, I think mental health is very important. Um, I think, you know, we just, everybody, you know, has their own struggle. And I think it's important to let people know, like, no one is not, not struggling at some point, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, and so, you know, you credit a strong support system and it seems like you did just get to have fun. I didn't realize you were doing two major shows at once though. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I didn't realize it. I was like, oh, I'm off from one-on-one. All right. I got to go shoot a couple episodes of the Proud Family. And it's kind of like, I, I, it feels like I'm reliving the same thing because we're rebooting the Proud Family now for Disney plus this year. Wow. Um, and so I'm now doing call me cat for Fox and proud family at the same time. And it's funny because I I'll tell people like as an actress or an actor, you're not, you know, you don't always work all the time. You're kind of like, um, okay, when's the next game thing coming? I would like to work. And you would spend so much time like worrying when I want to work where's the next like where's the next thing and then next thing you know all these things come out of nowhere and you're like see like why don't worry like it's coming yeah. it's coming hang in there <laughs> that's so cool I think um you know for for you with um with these shows like with the Fox show um is it like a traditional sitcom where it's multi-camera Yes, we wow. are shooting a multi-camera show. We were supposed to have an audience, but as we were starting to film um, our pilot, that's when um, the shut the first shutdown happened. And so now we don't have an audience and we actually shoot 
uh, three days instead of two, but it is a multi-camera show. So it's um, back to my roots. <laughs> you got the best gig in town. Girl, schedule. I mean, the schedule, it, it's going to get easier. It's a little harder with the pandemic, but yeah, it's like, it's just fun. It's where we're having so much fun. It's, 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 it's a lot. You, you feel different people experiencing the pressure and you have a little bit of pressure because we're developing these characters um, with masks on <laughs> and we don't get to see each other's faces until we're shooting. Um, so that's a little, a little pressure, but to be surrounded by so many people who, you know, are just gen- who genuinely love what they do mm-hmm. and they respect you for what you do. And we're all just in a certain place where it's like, you just feel good and we're having fun and, and everybody's so talented and from so many different, we have the legendary Swoozy Kurtz in our cast, you know, Maya Bialik is absolutely amazing. And we have Julian Gant, who is the funniest like man with Leslie Jordan. I who, love Leslie Jordan I, too. Girl, like I, it's so funny because they cast him and I found out about him as we were about to shoot the pilot. And I followed him because they told me how amazing <laughs> his Instagram was. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, this is so cute. Like, this is the cutest thing ever. Literally two weeks later is when he went viral. And I was like, I knew about him before. (laughs) I was like, I knew about him before. And literally he is the same, like exactly what he shows you online. That is who he is. Like that is, uh, and then before we even talk more, I have to, my last person that I didn't mention so far is Cheyenne Jackson, who we have on the show. And he's absolutely amazing in every way. So I just, to be surrounded like by this group of people is just, you know, it's, it's a blessing and you kind of have to sit back and be like this experience. I, I just have to like, just take this all in and don't take it for granted, you know? Yeah, for sure. Well, it doesn't seem like you do, which is really cool. So now with proud family is the whole cast coming back. Uh, I mostly the entire cast is coming back. We have a couple of people who aren't, uh, but the majority of us are back. And um, we were actually supposed to record together this time. We were all going to be in the room together. But because of the pandemic, we actually um, had to start recording from home. Mm-hmm. Um, they sent uh, all the studio stuff here. I had to, you know, make deals with my kids about being quiet uh, <laughs> for a couple of hours. I'm like, look, just a little bit, just a little bit, baby. Just go back here. You go watch TV in my room <laughs> just a little bit. Um, but um, but as things were getting better, I was able to go into a studio, of course, with certain guidelines. Um, but yeah, so I haven't seen any of them either because of everything that's going on. But, um, you know, safety first. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, you've done so much in your career. Do you feel like when you go from show to show, you're able to bring those relationships like you're so tight knit? I feel like on a show and then you go to something else and you develop a whole new family. Do you feel like you're able to carry those relationships over or is it challenging? Um, I think it's challenging for me because like I said before, for so long, I looked at this as a hobby. It was like, Oh, this is fun. Like I was like, I don't, I mean, I remember some people's names, but I'm just like, hi, how you doing? And I'm hugging people. And then one of my cast members like, you know, that's the head of the network. I'm like, no, it was. Oh, he's he was nice. You know, what I mean? like, so I'm just getting into the habit of like learning everyone's names. And like, I'm a I'm a face person. And I'm like, if you're sweet to me, I'm sweet to you. There's just, there's just, it is what it is. If you're mean to me, I'll probably still be sweet to you just to piss you off. Um, <laughs> but, um, you know, I'm, I'm learning to do that. I'm learning to, um, maintain uh, certain relationships and um especially if you know someone's genuine and i know that they love this same thing that i love why not want to bring them along for any rides that i'm on and hope that they do the same because you know we just love the same things you know it's so funny and i don't know if kevin's able to chime in but you remind me of myself in that where i was kind of that butterfly too, where I would just bounce around and just be happy. And I didn't know who anybody was. I still don't really care, even though like (laughs) I've gotten better about it because you know, there is a business end of it, but for the longest time, and I didn't even know who celebrities were. I was like, Oh, that's that. Oh, cool. That's awesome. Like I just looked at everybody as people 
and then wanting to have a genuine conversation with them. And, um, and so that's really funny. Kev, are you here? Yeah, no, yeah, I, no I absolutely, absolutely thought, thought the same. The same. Wait, he, hold on. He's, he's echoing and doubling. Kevo, yeah. will you mute your Zoom and okay. then press your talk button? <laughs> I will. There he is. We love technology. Okay, sorry about that. No, that's perfect. Sorry, Boomer. Yes, exactly <laughs> like uh, Maria. That's what she was always like. It's like if they didn't like you or they liked you, you were always the same to them. But I'd be like, wait, Maria, you know what that person just did to you behind the scenes like, really but i love that don't lose that don't don't lose that it's 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 also what comes out in your your work i i, I remember you when maria did 101 and i said wow this girl's such a unique it factor spark which of course is no coincidence why you've been able to continue but um i think as an act it's i think uh maria where you were working every day and hosting it was easier to beat it out of you but it's what you have is so precious and just don't let anybody beat that out of you. It's just, it's, it's, uh, it's very special. And it's nice to see. Thank you. Thank you. It's a struggle. Cause sometimes you want to be like, Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> You're like, no, no, no. Mm-mm-mm. Well, you have to have be- your moments that you do have to, you know, we, me has been advised of that too. We have to have your moments where you do have to stand your ground. You're, there's a balance yeah. to it, but, but it's also, but keeping that, mm-hmm. you know, that what you have, which I see in you. But yeah, like I remember one distinct conversation where I was like, you know, I went out to a party and then I came home and I was like, oh my God, I saw this person. Then I saw that person. It was so much fun. And then, and then I saw this guy and he goes, what? And I go, yeah, I'm like, you know, I, I gave him a big hug and he said this and then he goes, you hugged him? He's like, do you remember he tried to blackmail you out of $150,000 and wouldn't let you move on in your contract and all this stuff that happened? I go, oh shit, I forgot. <laughs> and by the way, Kyla, this was like a really painful experience, but oh no, I, I always was just so happy and just kind of didn't hold on to things and just kind of like was going about my happy like, vibes and yeah i think <clears throat> there were some distinct moments where i got definitely beaten down and they they dimmed the light for a long time and buried it real deep like somewhere down in my ankle and yeah. um and you know the last couple of years have been about bringing it kind of back and that's why i think kevin's so adamant for you to not let anybody do that um because it sucks yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, I, I, I have my moments, like Kevin said, like everybody. I, but I try to have my moments and do it in a, in a, in a, in a cute way, so they know. But I'm, I'm serious. <laughs> but I will hurt you. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah. I mean, I, I'm a little. I'm, I, I remember stuff though. I, I'm really good with that. Like I remember stuff from way. Like, oh no, I remember when. But you may, you people may never know that I remember because I still give them the energy that I want to give, that I want to sit in, that I want to be in because I don't want to be um, in a vindictive place. I don't want to be in an evil, mean spirit because then that gets on me and stays on me, mm-hmm. you know? So yes, it's right. Kind of like, it's, it's like I want, I have to have good energy. Like if uh, above all, I have to come home with me and feel all of that. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm a, I, I, I feel like I'm a super empath. Like I feel you know, and, and I have kids that I feel, you know, are very similar. And I'm like, whatever energy I have going on, I'm bringing it to them. So does that situation or does that person really matter to that, like that much for me to let them, you know, mess up what's going on in here. So I just, you know, I try to take every situation and I'm getting better with learning people (laughs) and then remembering names and being like, Oh yeah, I know you from, okay. Yes. We work together. I'm, I'm getting better with that. I'm, I'm like, and, and, and it's funny because now situations I'll remember somebody and I'll be having a conversation and they'll say someone's name and I know who it is. And I'll be like, Kyla, you're a grown up. (laughs) (laughs) You remember that person. You just had a grown up conversation. You didn't say, no, the guy with the, you know, I got a mole right here. And, (laughs) You know, so um, I'm trying. It's hard, but you have to in this business, especially because there's people who will be mean to people just uh, because they have their own stuff that they're dealing with. Mm -hmm. And I um, I try my hardest. I always say, like, don't take out something on someone that is not their fault, you know, and that's what you do when you hold on to things from someone else. It can go elsewhere. And I don't want the people around me who I love to ever feel that energy. 
I love that. And you mentioned being an empath, and I know that's part of why you're such a great actress, because you're able to feel what other people are feeling and then become that. You know, uh, I think um, I love where we're going uh, in, in terms of uh, – creatively in Hollywood, the stuff we're shooting now, I think there's just going to be so many oppor more opportunities for a diverse group, which I love because there's so many great stories to tell. Have you ever thought of any historical uh, figures or people that you would love to play one day that, you, that might be present a bigger challenge for you? Um, I actually have not. I'm actually just now really getting into um, reading more and, and, and getting more detailed into my family's history and because I want to, you know, dabble in directing and producing and that would that's a whole big part of me looking at this as a grown up. And it's like, Kyla, there's, you know, you have to like <clears throat> look deeper into what you want to do. And even my man, I I'll tell him, I'm like, babe, I just want to work. Like I just want to work. And he's like, Kyla, don't say that. That's not what you want to do because people call you for things and you say, Oh, hell no, I'm not doing that. So don't, you can't just say, like he'll tell me, you can't just say, I want to work. You have to like really dig into what you really want to do. And I think I'm in a place right now where I'm finding that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm finding um, different <clears throat> stories. I'm, I'm reading more and I'm, especially now that my kids are older, because I know that they're going to do, they're going to do what they see me doing not what I tell them to do. So now if I'm going to sleep, I'm have a nice book, you know what I mean? Or I'm yeah. teaching them about different things that I didn't learn about growing up. And so I'm, I'm not exactly sure yet, but I'm in this, in this place where I'm, I'm working towards that. So I'm happy with Yeah, that. I think it also gives you more control over your career and your destiny. But when you, when you talk about your, your family history, how far back would you want to go? I'm curious, because I'm a history major. So I'm very big, um, American history especially. I'm not sure. It's crazy because I used, I had my daughter in this uh, French school for a while and they would have like international day. And I would, um, and this is the first time that I sat back and was like, I don't know my family history. Like, I feel like there's only a certain point that we get. And then it's like, oh, well, we either came through, we were brought through this area or we were brought through this, this area, but we're did we come from yeah. <laughs> and you know what, you know what exactly where, you know? So I've been doing like the ancestry.coms and the, you know, and trying to talk, I'm very fortunate to have both of my grandparents still here with me um, in, in this life. And um, so talking to them, of course I get bits and pieces here and there. Um, but um, just even learning more about um, our, our history that's not too long ago, you know, my great uncle, uh, was Geronimo Pratt, who was a Black Panther, who was in falsely in prison for 27 years for a crime that he didn't commit, um, that he knowingly didn't commit by the FBI. And so even just reading more about his story and um, learning about, you know, my grandparents and all the things that they had to deal with and, and you know, family healing and family, like our, with our history, you know, and learning more so we know what we came from. So it's, it's uh it's a lot but i'm like i'm i'm on a mission like i'm i'm making sure like okay i need to I, there's things that i don't know that i feel like my parents might not know and i'm like okay no we have to stop this cuz now my kids are going to ask me questions and we got to know something it's so cool because i feel like it's great that you have your grandparents here because they're going to get to know things that they didn't get to know either because of you yeah and then you yeah, can love, take that I, to your I, kids. It's so funny. My, my grandmother, I actually just talked to her yesterday and she's like, oh, I'm sorry, baby. I didn't send you any of the meditations that I've been doing. And we've been talking about, you know, last time I was with her, I was like, I, you know, I just want to make sure your energy is good. I just want to make sure no one's stressing you out. Like none of this matters and blah, blah, blah. And she's like, oh no, I'm fine, baby. I realize that you know, everybody's fighting their own battles and I do my meditations and, and it, having those conversations with her made me more at ease because a lot of people at her age, you know, weren't open to that or not, not open to that, but they weren't exposed to that type of healing, that mm -hmm. type of work that they could possibly do. So to know that she's doing it and is, is an amazing feeling. So I'm like, I know that we're like bouncing off of each other and I can learn things from her and she's willing and open to learn things from me, even though I'm younger. Mm -hmm. And I have to, I make, I make the approach really good. I, I, you know, a lot of people in my family are like, they can't talk to the elders. I'm like, well, look how you talking to them. 
Hilarious. How you talking to them? They're not going to listen to you because look at how you're talking to them. Calm it down. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. You got to get grandma watching better together. She would love it. I do. I can't wait. I can't wait to tell her about it. I um, cannot wait. You know what Maria did, which I think I try to advise more and more people to do is especially with grandparents, but even parents and where you want to be a director, get a camera on them. Mm-hmm. And and believe me, and, and, and it will mean so much to your children, your grandchildren, even for you. I think it'll help you as a director, too. But, um, you know, my mom now in her 70s is regretting. She's like, oh, I used to make she used to make fun of me for asking all the questions of my grandparents when I was little. And she's like, I we never thought to ask. So now can we say it right? I never thought to ask. I, I should have put talk- them on camera, but I never <laughs> thought about it. <laughs> <laughs> that is how my mother talks. But <laughs> but I think that think of the stories they would share and tell you. And I think you never know. There might be something even bigger film wise for you. But I, 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 I and and I'll tell you, I know with the with the Black Panthers, there have been very few narrative films about them. I know Mary the Van Peebles did something, you know, years ago, but I, I think there's so many important stories that people don't of all races don't know about you know, from history, yeah. from American black history. And then, of course, you know, there's beyond that. And I think where that's touching your family. God, I hope you pursue it. I don't know, because I just feel this, like, great light. Kelsey from the booth has mm-hmm. said the same thing. And I just see it in you. And I, I, and if you could get it out as a director, but I also would love to see you take a challenge as a role, like to take a, you know, maybe it is, it was the love interest of your uncle, you know, from back then. I don't know. I just, I don't know why I keep seeing her in some kind of historical mm-hmm. role. And I haven't done that yet. I I think that it 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 frightens me, and that's why I have to do it. <laughs> I like um, I, I but I definitely do have to do that. I have been um, having the conversations, but I haven't recorded them. Like I haven't put I haven't put them on camera. Oh, so I'm yeah. going based off of what I remember or what I'm taking in my notes really really quick. But I do need to get on a camera. I, I, this this year for my birthday. Um, it was right before we were going to start shooting. And I was like, well, I know I'm not going to be able to travel soon. So I was like, I need to get tested and I want to see my grandparents. Like I, that's what I want to do. Like I need to see them and be around them and ask them questions. And it literally was one of the best birthdays because I just made sure that I went to go see, um, I had to travel to see both of them. So it was weird during this time, but you know, it was, it was, you know, we uh, taking advantage of these moments that we get to have with the people who were here before us who set it up, you know? I love it. Yeah. You know, um, guys, I don't know how much you know, but um, Kyla has starred in five of the Dr. Doolittle movies, <laughs> two of which she got to act with Eddie Murphy, who is one of my favorites ever. Love Eddie. Oh, my God. I love him. Okay. So tell me what it was like working with him. And do you keep in touch or did you ever? If, I assume if if the 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 Kyla trajectory is is on that means you had fun and you left and then that was it <laughs> but you tell yeah, me pretty much i'm like oh i got to work with him that was nice i'm not gonna bother that man <laughs> <laughs> no, I, and i think that's uh that i think that my personality is just always like that like, i work with people now and i'll be like oh well, we'll see each other when we see each other all right it's okay you know but um i first worked with eddie i did doctor the first doctor do little i was nine years old and um it was an amazing experience. I had watched him in so many things, but of course I didn't know, you know, the major uh, superstar that he was. I just knew that he was a really nice guy and he was playing my dad. And um, I think I remember that was my first time really seeing somebody um, basically show me within how they were working, which was like, okay, we can have fun in between takes, but then it was like, oh, action time is time to work. You know, and I think I just learned that from watching him. I don't think that was ever said to me, um, but he was a, he was just super nice. We did the second um, Doctor Doolittle, and then um, uh, in between, right before we did the third one, I visited the producers on the set of Norbit, and we were going to do the third one. I was taking over the torch of playing Doctor Doolittle, and uh, pretty much got his blessing of like, oh my gosh, you guys are doing some more. That's going to be amazing. I did uh, the number three, and then the next year I did four and five, uh, which which at the time went straight to uh, DVD. And I had not seen him. I had not talked to him. And it's crazy. The last event that I went to right before the new year, his daughter 
um, is an artist and she had um, a showcase with a bunch of other talented artists. And I went, I got invited, but through my grandmother, <laughs> my grandmother knew someone who was throwing the party and she was like, you got to go to this party. And I'm like, grandma, I'm tired. I don't want to go to a party. She's like, no, you got to go. And I went and that's what it was. And, <laughs> and at the event, um, Eddie was there and he saw me and he said, oh my gosh, all of my daughters are here tonight. And he just gave me a really big hug. Aww. And I was like, and that was all I needed. And it was funny because afterwards, everybody was like, why didn't you take a picture? And I was like, the moment just didn't feel right. I, that like literally that exchange is what I what You'll I see needed. him again. Like, I, yeah. And I was like, I'll see him again. Like, I don't. I, I, I just, I'm not, you know, in the, you know, Instagram and all that. Like I, I'm in it, but I never, I, I love to live for the moment. And, and, and that moment was just amazing to me. And it, to me, anything else would have been weird. So I was like, I just, you know. <laughs> I love that he came up to you and he said that. That's so sweet. And yeah, this was always, just always before this new sweet. year. Yeah, this was, uh, this was in February of this year. Wow. When, February of 2020. Last year, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah that's so cool i love it so, you yeah. worked so with a lot of cool people our first project is like this long from now like for him to say something that sweet you know yeah um who do you think you want to work with that you haven't gotten to work with um there's many <laughs> there's many it's funny i was just watching um i think it's diane keaton's birthday today and i saw somebody post something to her i was like i love diane no one work with her um but i it was funny the first person that comes to mind when people ask me that now is taraji p henson mm. like i literally i love taraji um my man uh works with taraji um to, she, her energy and who she is as a person um is amazing and he literally told me like you guys are like the same person like 10 years apart like you're both crazy <laughs> and, and I just think that you know that energy um in a project together would be dope that's so fun what does your guy do uh he's a tattoo artist and ah. he's a, a musician ah, interesting. Yeah, so he's everybody's everybody's tattoo man <laughs> I love it I love it yeah. yeah I think that would be really fun for you yeah um, yeah I think, it, I think it'd be good so I think it'd be fun. so guys tell me if I'm crazy because when we do the live, sometimes I screw up what I talked about. Did we talk about Call Me Cat here as well already? We didn't. Okay, good. So Call Me Cat is your new show on Fox. Yeah. And it is a sitcom. We did talk about it, I thought, because we talked about it was three camera. We talked a little about the sitcom, but not. we didn't get into nitty gritty. Okay, so... She said, not the nitty gritty. Got it. Not okay. the nitty gritty. <laughs> okay, we so, talked about who she worked with, though, like who's on the show. Okay. Thank you for being my USB drive. So <laughs> um, Call Me Cat on Fox. One episode's already aired. Another one's coming January 7th at 9 p.m. Okay. Yeah. And um, tell me about the show and about your role in it. Uh, the show is starring Maya Bialik. It is about a 39-year-old woman who, um, you know, something drastic happens in her life. Uh, she loses her dad and she just decides to up and make a change. She's like, I don't want to be a math professor anymore. I want to open a cat cafe. I love cats and I love <laughs> coffee. <laughs> and um, she's like, I want to live this dream. And my role, I play uh, Randy. The show is based off of the UK show, Miranda. Um, so we they revamped it for for now uh, for here and uh, my character's name is Randy, um, which which is another great thing that I, I have to tell you guys really quick. So it's based off of the show Miranda. Um, my grandmother's name is Miranda, and they changed my character's name to Randy. And when this like before we you know started filming because my name was something else. And I was so excited. I was like, oh my goodness, I get to play my grandmother's name on a show. Like, she's going to be so excited. I get to be Randy. And what's crazy is I got the first script. I opened it and it shows all the characters and their first names and their last names. And my first and last name on the show is Miranda Hamilton. So my grandmother's name is Miranda, but she was named after her grandmother, who is Miranda and my, so that's my great, great grandmother's name is Miranda Hamilton. Stop it. <laughs> I 
my great great my grandmother's grandmother who she's named after her name was Miranda Hamilton and my name is Miranda Hamilton on the show okay like what that is <laughs> wild I was on our first zoom table read like okay guys I know the network is here you guys are all doing business but I got something to tell you <laughs> wow like it's like it, it's an amazing feeling but um but yeah, I played Miranda, who is um, vibrant, who is that girl who's just like, it is what it is. I'm working here. I don't really like cats, but I got to make my money. You're cool. You're a little crazy lady, but I'm going to help you out in some ways. And then we develop a friendship. And um, Leslie Jordan's character, Phil, we're like sidekicks. So everything that, like, first of all, imagine working with Leslie Jordan, this man who is hilarious. And you have to sit here and be straight faced talking to him. Like <laughs> she, like we're, we're having so much fun. We're having so much fun. And there's so much that's to come. I'd like, I can't wait until it's, it's out for you guys to see. Now the first episode, I was having a lot of anxiety. I think it was mainly because I was, I've been booked on it for so long and we were so, so, supposed to shoot it. And then we got shut down and then we finally shot it. And now we've been shooting it with masks on. And it was kind of like, well, how is it going to, you know, how are people going to accept this? And honestly, I feel like there's nothing like it on TV. Like we're, we're just, we're unique. We're different. We have so many different people. There's so much diversity. Um, you know, it's, it's a show that's just making people laugh, you know, mm -hmm. it's not about, you know, but, but it's also teaching you things. It's also giving you that feeling of, you don't have to have what society claims as what everything is or what you need to be happy. I love that. It's a great message. And that's what the greatest shows have, right? Like you've been on so many, you know, family oriented shows and, you know, those are the, those are the ones that really have a lasting impression. And, um, and I really, I wish you guys the best of luck with it. I can't imagine, um, it not being a huge success because we all need the laughs and you guys are definitely providing them. Um, and Fox is really heavily promoting it, just so you know, which is great. Yeah. So it's on everyone's radar. Everywhere I'm seeing it's it. Crazy is, I, my man is like, he's not a TV guy. Like, he's just like, oh, like when we met, he's like, oh, so yeah, you was on TV. Oh, yeah, you were the girl from, uh, <laughs> like, he's just not a TV guy. And, but with all the promos during football, he's like, bet. coming out after the game. And I'm like, oh, yeah, now you, um, See what's going on in my life? You care? He's like, oh, yeah, this is a thing, I guess. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, okay. That's what you do. <laughs> and so, Kylie, you have two kids? Yes. I, I birthed two kids, but I technically have three. My bonus baby is 14. Okay, your bonus baby. Yeah. Um, I love that. And how old are the two? Uh, seven and 10. Wow. Okay, so how do you have any daily practices that help keep you grounded? Um, not daily. I wish I was more consistent with certain things. Um, just basically it, it's crazy. I went and shot a, um, I shot a lifetime Christmas movie this year during the pandemic. And so I had to, uh, quarantine for two weeks by myself, um, which I had, I'd never been alone. Like my sibling that's closest in age to me, we're a year apart. Like I literally have never, ever been alone. And, um, I was talking to my muscle therapist and she was like, practice grounding because you um, feel so much of the things around you, you hold it in your body, like you mm -hmm. hold it in certain areas and it's affecting why you're in pain so much or why you're dealing with um, certain things. So she was like, practice grounding. So I went and got a, a bunch of crystals and um, that, are, you know, help with grounding and, and, and practice different things. So I'm trying to um, bring those to my kids as well, because I know as children, we don't understand, a lot of people don't understand that you know, there are many humans mm. and, you know, they have feelings and they go through um, uh, similar things, if not worse, because they're experiencing things for the first time, certain feelings and, and um, certain anxieties and certain things that they have going on. So even if it's something simple as um, going to the park and walking around barefoot on the grass, um, sitting down and talking to each other about, you know, um, what was the best part of your day? What was the hardest part of your day? Um, just, um, keeping communication open. That's my main thing that I want with my kids. Um, I feel like, um, my generation is 
uh, kind of like, okay, there's stuff that we need to heal from that no one's talking about and we need to work on it. So now that our kids don't have to heal from as much, of course, they're gonna have to heal from something because kids always find a reason to be mad about something in life. That's what we do. Um, but <laughs> not to have to heal as much, you know, yeah. and um, yeah, just keeping the communication open. I love that. You found the crystals to help ground you. Um, I actually, I, I went to a crystal shop and I literally went in there and I was like, wait, what am I supposed to, like, I feel so many different energies. What am I supposed to buy? Like, I don't even know. And, um, so now I, I take my girls and I say, okay, look at the crystals and whatever is, whatever you feel, whatever you're drawn to show mommy and maybe you can get that one. So they'll show me and I'll read what it's about. And I'll say, oh, that's great. Like, this might be something my baby needs help with because she was drawn to it. So I'll get her the crystal and then um, we'll have like our crystals sitting up on the table and, and, and I'm still learning about crystals. I don't know about, I'm not like a specialist or anything, but um, me and my man will have like a, a tray full of crystals and I'll look in it before I leave for the day and I'll grab two that are, that I'm drawn to and I'll just keep them on me. And then at the end of the day, I'll look and see what they meant. And I'll be like, oh, that's why I needed this today. Mm. And just that. knowing that I have a different type of, you know, energy um, with me is kind of like, okay, um, reminding myself that I'm protected from anything that's going to give me anxiety or anything that's not here for me, you know, trying to um, just speak and, and manifest certain positivities with all that's especially all that's going on in the world now, you know, that it's easy to you know, think negative. And as soon as you think negative and let that live on you, that's kind of what your life becomes, mm -hmm. you know? So it's like, you have to fight those moments of when they come like, uh-uh, not today. <laughs> I ain't got time for this. Get it together. <laughs> so great. Kyla, you're amazing. Um, I'm you. really glad we got to have this conversation and I'm really glad things are going so well for you. And um, yeah, you're just, you're such a good one. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so happy that you guys even asked me to be involved with this. I'm, I, I love, you know, being on platforms like this and I love especially your story and everything that, you know, you and your family have been through and endured and now doing what you're doing now to help others and them watching things like this so they can understand, you know, that the things that they're experiencing is natural and normal and, if we talked about things more then people know that it's not, you know, something's not wrong with you because mm -hmm. you're experiencing certain feelings or going through certain things. And I think what you're doing is absolutely amazing. And I'm just happy that you allowed me to be a part of it. Aww. Well, we're better together and yes. we are growing together here. So you got to get grandma watching. And yes. um, if you ever <laughs> need any help or anything, we're here. And, um, you. and, you know, Kevin's the, the Hollywood career coach. So if you, if you need help finding that role, I'm sure he has 20 of them in his head right now. Um, <laughs> He's just like sitting there like, mm, I just like want to, Kevin's get... like the psychic for careers. And so <laughs> take everything he said, you know, that, that's to the why bank. You guys, that's why you guys probably work. Cause you're more like me. That's kind of like, no, yep. this yep. is not it's Totally. And then the, see, and my man's the same way. He's the like, no, tunnel vision. Yeah. Like, I wouldn't take the picture with Eddie either. And he's beat into me. No, you need the picture with Eddie. And so and I'm just kind of like, like, what? what? Are you doing? I'm like, I was a <laughs> so that's good see balance yin yang yep balance you just, have to have partners balance. just get <laughs> cameras on grandma grandpa aunts and uncles please yes. oh and by the way and we had a trivia game do. we forgot the trivia game jeff will you lead us in the quick trivia yeah absolutely kelsey i'm gonna let you reset the shot just with the four of us thank um, you thank kyle, you kyle we spoke on the phone as i told you i'm like the exact right age to be a proud family fan yes! um, I, honestly if, i'm a fan of your whole career but i feel like disney was my jam we're like pretty close to the same age so um i have a proud family trivia game oh goodness <laughs> we'll see how you do i i know obviously with the show coming up we have some fun questions so we'll just see how it goes before you let you go okay i think I th my girls have been watching it a little bit so hopefully i'm a little brushed up <laughs> we'll see we'll see um okay so one of the things i love about the proud family is the amazing guest actors that you guys had come on the show mm -hmm. so i have a list of four kind of iconic names and you have to guess which one didn't actually do a vo for proud family Ooh. okay mariah carey samuel l jackson uh, Steve Harvey 
or Viola Davis? I want to say Viola Davis. That is correct. Yeah, the, she missed out. She should Good have been job. on it for Good sure. Job. You know, Viola, it's still cool. We're doing the revamp. You can come to, yeah. the, to, to the other one. Come on, girl. She'll come on the reboot. Um, <laughs> do you remember how many episodes of The Proud Family were in its original run? Oh, shoot. Um, <laughs> let's say 32? <laughs> Uh, you must have, you must have loved your job because it's actually fifty two, which means it really? must have flown by. Yeah, those those it, Disney shows they put. All I remember is like the season numbers. So yeah. I guess I guess they did add. Yeah, I did. I was, and that's my favorite thing. I love. I just did a cartoon this morning. I love just going in and just yep. yelling random stuff and then leaving. <laughs> There's no real reason you ever I actually have her. to know how many episodes were in the season. So probably not the best question. Anyway, but now but, because of you, I do. So I, I love appreciate. It. It. I love it. Uh, Kyla, do you know Penny's full name? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> um, no. Uh, that's okay. I, obviously, you know it's Penny Proud. Technically, full legal name, Penny Marie Proud. Crazy. <laughs> Who knows? I found that online. Hopefully, That's it's horrible. Sure that's, it <laughs> that's bad. I feel bad about that one. I should at least know her. I thought it was an, I really thought it was going to be something like out, like ridiculous though. So I'm glad it's just. I wish it was either, I wish it was either Miranda or Hamilton, but that's okay. That's, you know, show. she has that you now know. though. It could have been in tune too. <laughs> yes. Um, okay. So there's an episode where your character, La Cienega, Zoe and Dijanae make a band. Do you remember yeah. the name of the band? LPDZ. There, there we go. Ding, ding, ding. Um, and finally, BB and Cece. Identical or fraternal twins? They have to be fraternal, right? There you go. Because they're both girls. See, you tried to get me out of felt some type of way. I'm glad no, I nailed it. it. You nailed it. <laughs> yeah, you did well. You got more than half. Thank you. That counts. Hilarious. Thank you. Yes, I love it. Well, we gotta we gotta put the the um, feelers out to Viola for. You know, the show. Come on, Viola, come through. Anybody you know, else that you would want to come do it? You said what? Anybody else you want to come do Proud Family? Uh, we have a lot of a lot of great um, uh, people coming this year. I don't think I can say anybody, but um, who else? Like, I would love to have Samuel Jackson back. His voice is absolutely amazing in every single way. Taraji. Uh, who else? Uh, I don't know. Like, I don't know. Like, I, I shoot for the stars. Let's say Will Smith. Let's, Let's get Will him. In there. You know what I'm saying? Let's get Will. Martin Lawrence. Who else? I would I would love Leslie Jordan to come on the show. Uh, Julian Gant, who's also on our show, is amazing at voices. Cheyenne is good at vo see. We got I gotta I gotta talk to some people. <laughs> make your list. Make your list. I gotta um, be like Kevin. I gotta, I gotta be more like Kevin. I gotta start. I gotta get up in here and I yeah. gotta write stuff down. Focus. Focus. Now All you right. know. Who Listen, focus, man. <laughs> can I introduce the concept of slow coffee to you that Jeff Graham introduced to us? <laughs> low coffee yes it's the most jeff can you just tell her about slow coffee it might might really help her along guys well, yeah we can keep it quick because i know you got another another uh press thing you're going to kylo but a slow coffee um it's a game changer i grew up in a very kind of traditional midwestern family and there's nothing too complicated about a slow coffee it's pretty <clears throat> much just that kind of sacred you know, 20 or 30 minutes when it's just you and your coffee and you drink it slow and that's your slow coffee. Oh, that's why it's slow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So they, so by the way, so they had this during their holiday, their hol <laughs> during their holidays, they had a slow coffee Christmas Eve. Eve. The family <laughs> did. And we were just Look all intrigued. So, so that's when you like sit there and chill with your family and just sip on your coffee and talk. Slowly. 100%. 110%. Yeah, my family, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I, everybody's so loud, and um, I'm pretty sure it would be fast coffee. <laughs> somebody gonna call somebody something. <laughs> yeah. Yes. yeah, Kyla, Just, listen, slow coffee's you know, not for everyone. We trying to have slow coffee. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh. All right, guys. Let's let her get to her next interview. Kyla Pratt's new show, Call Me Cat, is airing on Fox Thursdays at 9 p.m., do not miss it. You can also follow her on Instagram where you will not find photos of her and Eddie Murphy, but it did happen uh, at <laughs> Kyla Pratt. 
<laughs> Kyla, congrats on everything, and I Thanks. hope to see you soon. Keep that light, Thank you for please. Me. I hope to see you soon, guys. Uh, that was amazing. She's hilarious and she's so awesome. bright and just awesome. That was really, really fun. And I think she has like when Kev, you talk about just star quality a lot when people are just kind of born a star. Don't you think she's one of them? Totally. Yep. She just has it. It factor. She really does. Yeah. Such a great she girl. Does. I really, yeah. really love her. And I remember having so much fun with her. Um, in the meantime, if you guys haven't subscribed, please click subscribe on YouTube. Follow us at Instagram. Kevin is uh, really jumping in there to make it a destination for you guys to have some really important tools in one place for you for 2021. Um, join us on Patreon if you click the link um, in my bio on my Instagram or on Better Together with Maria. You can join us there for all the incredible workshops that we're doing. And in the meantime, you can follow Kyla at Kyla Pratt at Better Together with Maria, at Jeffrey Crane Graham, at Kelsmeyer too. And remember, be nice people, make good choices, and be present.